This is McCall's pattern M8051. And everything that went wrong. That's it. We're done. <sighs> it's a journey. So there's nothing necessarily wrong with the pattern. I was just looking at it through novice eyes. I chose to sew view B without a top stitch and without pockets. As I mentioned in the previous start to finish video, I was skeptical about this pattern fitting around my hips. So I decided to make a mock-up. I added about two inches to the length of the dress so I could wear it in the winter. I also decided to add a few inches to the waistline of the skirt, but little did I know that was going to be a problem. So during the attachment of the skirt to the bodice, I noticed that the skirt part was a little too wide for the waistband. So I had added two pleats in the back to make the skirt fit to the waistband. But when I tried on the mock-up, I noticed the pleats made the back a little too bulky. And when I referred back to my pattern, I realized that the instructions didn't call for pleats. So there was something that I was doing wrong. For some reason in the beginning, I felt like the straps were a little too short again, just like in the yellow dress that I made. So I decided to add a little length to the straps. And then when I tried the dress on, the straps seemed to fall off my shoulder. So I had to go back and actually make the strap smaller again. <laughs> okay, so I am redoing the strap. I made it just a little bit too long. I've already went ahead and seam ripped it. And so now all I gotta do is just slide it through to where I want it to be. about there okay and then I gotta flip it out inside out trim the other strap and sew it back together <sighs> it's a journey so during the cutting phase of this dress I made the straps too long anyway. So I took some time to research why the skirt's width wasn't matching the bodice's width. And I realized that I needed to have pivoted the pattern instead of just adding inches to basically all four sides. And we'll take a look at that footage now. So here I just learned that it was a pivot that I was supposed to be making instead of an extension. I did add two inches to the upper hip area here to make it wider for my hips. But when I made the mock-up, I learned that the skirt was too long for the waistband of the bodice. Now I'm realizing this waist part is fine, as long as the hip, as long as this matched up, it was going to be fine. It's that hip measurement here that needs to be wider. So as I learned how to pivot the pattern to make it wider, I have just lost a good half of an inch of width that I could have used for the length of the skirt. And I'm remembering putting on the mock-up and it felt like I couldn't pin it down by my knees but I did make this two inches longer as well, so it could be worn for the winter. I'm thinking I'm going to have to make my seam allowance just a little bit smaller than the 5 eighths of an inch that it calls for, and also trim this part off so that the waist can be even, and then make the seam allowance a little bit smaller so that I can have an extra. <sighs> So I took some time to actually customize these buttons. 
I mean, I went out and bought some buttons. They were silver. I decided that I was going to paint them red. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I matched the button with the fabric, it didn't match the aesthetic, if you will, of this dress. I mean, check it out. It's kind of like a classic dress and putting on some metal buttons painted red doesn't really match the same classiness. So I decided to cover the buttons. Even though I took all of that time to find the right shade of nail polish and literally test each coat of paint as I created it, I just decided to use some extra fabric and cover the buttons. What I did actually is flip the button on its opposite side so I could have this smooth round finish. I literally made the shank of the button so I could sew it against the placket here and I think it turned out nice. Do you wanna know a secret? I happened to make this dress right after I made the plaid shirt. Therefore, I originally placed the button holes on the men's side of this dress. But that was the wrong side. So there actually are two sets of button holes in this dress. I think the hat's bow could have been a little bit bigger since the circumference of the top part here is actually a little bigger as well. Overall, this was my favorite make yet. I feel like I overthought the straps and I underestimated the width of the skirt, but I was really glad I got to practice how to pivot patterns. And my skepticism was correct. Because I lost the material after the pivot I made to the skirt, it actually makes this dress hard to button down and sitting makes me nervous. Hence to why I've been standing this whole time. <laughs> but I'm glad I've made this pattern at least once. I'll be sure to keep bringing those finished garment measurements and adjust accordingly. If you are in the middle of sewing this dress or thinking about sewing it, I hope you found this video helpful. If you liked what you saw, don't forget to also hit that subscribe button. I'm Lydia Ashley, future master needlewoman, and I'll see you in the next project. That's all.